Hello and welcome to this Exchange Wire video interview. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Kevin Liang, who is Senior Director of Solutions at Stack Adapt. Welcome. Thank you. Great to have you here. So today we're talking about vertical based strategies, which I'm very fascinated to hear your, your perspective on. Before we get into that, can you give me an idea of what your role is at Stack Adapt? Yeah, definitely. So I'm the Senior Director of Solutions at Stack Adapt. Um, I lead the regional team based out of London. We, we support um, the core markets across the UK as well as the broader EMEA region. Overall, the solutions team at Stack Adapt, we, we focus on a couple of different things. One is we focus on building out specialized industry-based solutions, right? Advertising is a very varied space. You know, there mm -hmm. are specific industry Based solutions that we need to build that are bespoke to key industries such as healthcare, B2B, CPG, retail, travel, for example. So one of our key focuses is thinking about how can we build end-to-end -end solutions that cater to specific industry needs. You know, from that point of view, uh, our team, I, I kind of see our team as a combination of a couple different roles. One is a program management role where we are driving some of these key industry develop, feature developments and product developments end to end. So we work with a large number of teams within the organization, both external facing teams, including our sales and revenue teams, as well as internal facing or, uh, organizations, including product engineering, data science, for example, to stand up these solutions that will become a big part of our platform, a big part of our feature set. I would also say a part of our uh, our, our role is um, a little bit more consultative as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we think about the overall vertical strategy, the overall ecosystem strategy. We spend a lot of time talking with customers, getting that primary feedback and validation from our customers. Um, a lot of the things that we do are very experimental and exploratory in nature as well. So we spend a lot of time um, running different proof of concepts. Um, you know, testing and validating different hypotheses and then working to basically scale those solutions within the broader organization. Um, so overall, if you were to ask me, I think our role spans a couple of different things. One is, you know, vertical based strategy, competitor strategy, um, program management, um, project and, and product management as well. And then consulting and sales engineering as well, because all of these things kind of had to go together in order to um, develop something end to end, right? You have to have the exposure to the customer, mm -hmm. you have to be um, in front of different, uh, you know, clients, whether that's agencies or, or brands, we have to understand um, customers' problems very deeply. And then we also have to have a strong technical and end to end understanding of everything that we're building as well in order to basically establish these projects and also execute these projects end to end as well. Wow, I did not appreciate how varied a solutions-based role is. Sounds like you're a conduit between lots of different teams kind of bringing everything yeah, together. Exactly. That's which a great is, way yeah, exactly, that's a great yeah. Great, really varied and broad, fascinating. Um, and you mentioned a couple of verticals back there when you were doing your intro yeah. into your role. Explain to me what we mean by a vertical-based strategy and kind of why we think that's, that's an important way for, for a brand to go. Yeah, definitely. So the, in short, basically what we understand is that every industry has specific challenges and marketing and advertising for every specific industry also is looking to solve very unique um, problems and challenges as well, right? So within Stack It Up, we do have several core or, or tier one verticals as we call, call it. Um, globally, we support verticals healthcare, B2B, travel, CPG, retail, and political, although political mm. can be fairly cyclical. Um, within the UK and the EMEA market, we are focusing strategically on, on a couple key verticals, just as we grow the team and as we expand, which is B2B and travel. Mm. Um, so overall, the how we got to this is, you know, when we first started, when we were a smaller company, what we realized is there are so many specialized use cases and problems that marketers are trying to tackle. That's something we did really well when we were growing, when we were 100 people and growing to 200 and 400, is we were able to identify very specialized problems, understand and quantify the potential of solving those problems, and then be really quick in iterating and developing solutions for those problems, right? So um, the, the example that I can give is, you know, when we first started thinking about this vertical-based approach, this was just on just at the beginning of the 20, 2020 uh, presidential election. So, you know, the political vertical w was a big area and big growth opportunity mm. for us. And as we kind of explored that vertical, we uh, were able to uncover very specific problems that we need to solve that were very unique to political at the time. Uh, a couple examples being, uh, you know, CRM, act real time CRM activation. So activating first party data and then the measurement against that, that data, right? So by 
focusing on a very specialized use case, understanding the potential for that use case to solve a specific industry problem, and then rapidly building something to solve that problem, we were able to achieve a lot of success in that first political cycle. So from there, we said, you know, how can we replicate this strategy and, and expand it out? There are other verticals where, you know, this type of problem solving can be really a really successful model, right? And then we started to layer on more and more things. And what we found is that is true, right? So if you think about B2B, for example, the problems that the marketing space is trying to solve is very specific for B2B, right? The types of data and the types of audiences that we're trying to reach are very different. The sales cycles and customer journeys are, are very different as well. Mm. The ways that we might need to optimize are very different. The uh, marketing objectives can also be very different as well, right? Think about, you know, B2B versus something that's more consumer focused. The sales cycle is, is much longer, for example. Absolutely. Right? So we, we kind of just built out the strategy of thinking what are, you know, the core or, or principled use cases that we need to solve for every vertical. And then we, we just went about it that way. Um, and, and the specialized specialization really helps because then we can, you know, our customer engagement strategy can be very specialized, right? Our, our testing strategy can be very specialized. Our prioritization strategy can be very specialized as well. So um, in short, yeah, that, that, that's, you know, one of the initial success stories from taking this approach yielded a lot of benefit for us. And we, we decided, you know, what is the best way to scale this out? And since then, we've built out so many unique and varied vertical use cases. And, and we've released so many products and, and features into the platform that are focused on supporting these verticals. And it's been a very successful strategy thus far. It's so interesting. And I, I'm, I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on how you would, um, how a brand is able, how your agency partners and brands are able to embrace vertical based approaches and vertical based strategies. Do they feel like without knowing much about it, that it's quite limiting? Well, I don't want to go after just a vertical because that feels like I, I want to be much broader than that in how, in how I target and kind of yeah. how I understand what this means. How do you help them understand the benefits of this and help, um, and help them embrace it? Yeah, that's a great question. So obviously we also recognize that a lot of you know, challenges and marketing use cases can be very universal, right? So our, our platform is very universal and a lot of our capabilities are very universal, right? Mm. So we continue to uh, you know, approach universal problems um, with, with the same amount of focus as well, thinking about like how we can uh, bring on new channels into the platform, right? Over the last couple of years, we've you know, heavily expanded our CTV footprint, our digital out of home footprint, our, our audio footprint as well. Um, so we have a lot of universal solutions, but what's been really helpful is we've also been able to work with vertical specific marketers to think about how we can blend some of our universal solutions with uh, vertical specific custom solutions to, to sort of mix and match the best of both worlds, right? So I think a really good example is data, right? Um, especially if you think about B2B, the, the, the core, audiences that B2B marketers are trying to reach are people that are known to work at specific companies or, or hold specific job titles or specific seniority, right? Because those are the people that will be making decisions when it comes to B2B buying cycles. Those people can be reached across all different channels. So one of the really effective things that we, we've been trying to think about is, you know, how can you apply, for example, a CTV channel strategy to a B2B marketing use case, right? Mm. So thinking about how we can apply universal capabilities and, and platform solutions we have with something that is more vertical focused and doing it in a bit of a unique way, right? I think when we first started and when we were first talking to, you know, B2B marketers early on, like 2020, 2021, a lot of the focus was on display, right? And and yeah. that makes a lot of sense, right? Traditionally, display has been, you know, that, that the channel for, for B2B marketing. Um, and we were running a lot of display campaigns. And that made sense at the time because, for example, a lot of measurement um, was, was possible in, in this channel, right? So uh, marketers wanted to target very specialized users and then the measurement component of it was re really important. So logically, these things kind of very coupled together. Mm -hmm. Now that we've been able to make a lot of um, um, inroads with different measurement capabilities and we're able to apply ABM measurement now to all different types of channels, we have more flexibility to think about how can we apply other channel strategies to something that was traditionally focused on display, right? So that's been a conversation that we've been having internally a lot and we've been getting a lot of traction with our customers as well. And a big one today is, you know, how can we build an ABM strategy using CTV to start, right? Because, you know, we don't want to just target a very uh, small customer set on a very specific set of, you know, web-based display publishers. We want to find other or uncover other audiences that are similar to our core buyers, right? You know, CTV is a great channel for that. And if we can 
solve some of the existing challenges that um, B2B marketers have around attribution and measurement, mm. then we can we can be much more broad in terms of our channel strategy, right? So um, that's sort of a long-winded way to suggest that even though specialization can feel limiting in some ways because you're thinking about problems in a very specialized way, there are very unique ways that we can combine, you know, custom or very specialized use cases with the more universal things that are, um, you know, certain platforms and DSPs can offer as well to, to build something that is greater than the sum of its parts. It's fascinating because, you know, B2B specifically is a very challenging vertical. Obviously, you mentioned the long sales cycles. It's difficult to know who to target. And obviously, over the past few years, there's been a, a greater amount of B2B advertisers realizing they can target people in their personal lives and not just go after display. As you said, it's like now we're targeting them in the sort of CTV environments as well. Um, and so you mentioned um, obviously B2B specifically there, and it's a fascinating vertical because it's very, very challenging for um, advertisers to be able to target their audience. And there's been a, a long time where they've tried to go, as you mentioned, just to display. And now they're looking into other areas where they can target them, you know, kind of in their personal lives. And it makes it an interesting way of doing things. What I'm interested in finding out from you is where that goes in terms of the conversations you're having with a B2B advertiser. Are they coming to you and saying, I want to be able to create an ABM strategy with CTV, or are you saying you can do this, this is how you can target people? And how do you generally level an omnichannel strategy, which is quite broad and kind of targeting people across very, very many different bases with a more specific vertical based strategy? How do those two things come together? Yeah, it's a great question. So generally speaking, you know, we have uh, clients that are in at various different uh, places in terms of you know how they think about innovation. So some some of the times you know clients are already thinking about innovative ways to apply different channels, and for us our our goal is to help them to test and, and validate these strategies and help them run uh, POCs um, to to look at what's successful and what isn't successful. Mm -hmm. For other clients that are a bit new to this and and they need a little bit more you know guidance in terms of what makes the most sense and and you know, how these strategies can fit into their, their traditional understanding of B2B marketing, you know, we help them all along the way, right? We, we provide insights into, you know, what are the most effective tactics and channels for, for specific objectives. And then we also help them with setting up, you know, proof of concepts and tests so that they can, you know, uh, learn how, how you know these different strategies can can be effective, right? We we always take a very you know test first approach to, to things. So so you know we we help and, and collaborate with our clients along along the way. Overall, I think it really comes down to a couple different things. One is for um, clients that are used to the traditional channels, helping them to understand the capabilities of measurement and attribution across all different types of channels. Now, right, that had been traditionally the thing that was limiting the testing of other channels for B2B marketing. Mm. You know, how can we do ABM measurement and attribution in CTV? How can we do it for digital out of home? How can we do it for um, you know, other channels? And so now that we've solved that problem in a lot of different ways, we can have that conversation with how can we apply measurement to other channels and build a very effective, successful multi-channel strategy. I think the other main challenge or, or question mark that we, we often face is what is the incremental value of every channel, right? For display, that that conversion, uh, the the contribution to a conversion or a user action is, is very clear, right? A user sees a display ad, maybe it's a retargeting ad. They they click through a website, they browse the website, they perform an action, they make a purchase, or or, or they sign, they they fill out a form, um, mm -hmm. they sign up for a demo, right? That you know that that relationship between a display ad and the user action is very clear. But what is the relationship between seeing a CTV ad um, and the influence of that and ultimately driving a user action, such as eventually then visiting the website and then performing an action, right? So the incremental contribution of each channel to the overall um, conversion of a user, that's a big question mark. That And we get a lot of questions from clients around that, right? So that's something that we, we try to solve through testing and experimentation, right? So a big focus for us in the next year or so is really expanding our analytics capabilities to be able to answer these questions, right? How can we apply different testing methods such as looking at cross-channel attribution, for example, or incrementality to answer these very, very critical questions around, hey, does CTV drive incremental benefit, right? Because, you know, CTV is a very expensive channel, right? So, mm. you know, clients are, are very, very mindful that, you know, these, these strategies have to be effective, even though it might not be as easy to measure the direct benefit to a user action because of um, the nature of some of these channels, right? So, so that, that's, a big, uh, that's a big question mark or, 
or, or big question that our, our clients are trying to solve. But you know, we're we're working on building out the analytical framework to help our customers to solve these problems. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I, I want to close off by obviously where you sit within Stack Adapt, um, and we talked about you touching kind of many different t teams and departments. What you're seeing as the big opportunities for agencies and brands over the coming 12 months? I mean, obviously for you guys, vertical-based marketing is 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 a it's obviously a big one and a kind of a, a big um, area of focus. What else are you seeing as a, a real opportunity for them to be able to get their teeth into? Yeah, definitely, um, and especially in. UK and, and the broader EMEA region. Um, in the last couple of years, the, this looming, this looming idea or prospect that cookies were going away, mm -hmm. where you know that was really looming on 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 the minds of a lot of our clients. That was a lot of our conversations. We was thinking about how can we build out future proof strategies that can persist even if cookies go away sometime in the future. I know recently that change has been rolled back to some extent where uh, Google has announced that cookies aren't going away. But that being said, this idea of addressability and being able to reach the right users in a, ch in a changing identity landscape, that is still a uh, pretty persistent challenge um, and, and a big question mark for, for customers. And to still be a focus, right? The, the, the news about them, them rolling back the deprecation shouldn't distract them from the ultimate goal of still wanting to get to a place where the cookie isn't the primary source of exactly. addressability. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. And and one of the big opportunities is, you know, over the last couple of years, because there was always this prospect that cookies were going to go away, we've seen actually a lot of different innovations in the identity space, Great. right? Um, that's just because different entities needed to solve for identity because uh, just in case cookies go away, we needed to have alternative solutions in place, mm. right? So um, what we found as we've done discovery and explored the space is that there are a lot of really powerful identity solutions that can solve B2B and other vertical specific challenges, um, even if cookies remain in the future as well, right? So one of the big opportunities or one of the areas I'm mo most excited about is how can we harness some of the unique innovations that have already been developed in this space in order to uh, scale out our verticalized advertising solutions, right? Are there better ways beyond cookies for us to understand or put together a unified view of a customer, right? Are there ways for us to do people-based measurement and attribution that are using alternative methods of measurement and attribution um, that go beyond beyond cookies? And are there ways that we can also improve marketing performance and, and think about different performance optimization strategies that are based on um, you know, unique and, and new standards in the industry. So I think one of the big things I'm really excited for is how can we apply some of the applications of some of these different identity solutions to the things that we do every day. And, and that's also where, where there's a large opportunity as well, right? You know, our customers are looking to us to be innovative in the space and have a strong POV around this and a strong positioning. And so that's an area where we can really invest in, in building out a best in class solution. So definitely that is one area where I'm really excited. And another area I'm really excited is, you know, as we've also explored direct data partnerships um, over the last couple of years, we've noticed that there are so many different exciting players in the space that are thinking about you know, data and audiences differently, that are working to build out very, very high quality first party audience um, data sets that are thinking about different ways that we can do segmentation um, and targeting in a unique way. Um, and so what we're really excited to do is also build out our, our partner ecosystem over the next couple of years. And that's also a really great opportunity, right? There are you know, strategic um, partnership opportunities um, that will allow us to really accelerate the development of certain solutions. And that's a specifically an area that I'm really excited about over the next couple of years. That makes perfect sense. This has been really interesting. It's been great to hear what Slack Labs are doing in the kind of vertical-based space. Thank you so much for coming in. And thank you for watching.